Hello all, this is Collector Man, and I collect all things entertainment related, including horror. And welcome to part two of my favorite films. I just love collecting films physically. I love films of every genre, not just horror. So I would like to share those with you. Uh, this is part two, of course. So if you happen to miss the first part and you are interested, I will be leaving a link in the description. So I will get into this video and I will briefly explain why I love all of these films. The first one is one that you may not be familiar with, and that is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is a fantasy film based on a book series by Ransom Riggs. And I was a big fan of the book series before this film came out, so I was kind of following the development of this movie. And I was very happy when I found out that Tim Burton would be directing. This is directed by Tim Burton, one of my favorite directors of all time. This is a fantastic adaptation. And it stars Eva Green. Next is a film that has flown under way too many people's radar. It is a 90s film. It was released in 1992. And it stars John Lovitz, Terry Garr, and Jeffrey Jones. And that is Mom and Dad Save the World. And this is a space science fiction comedy film. And John Lovitz is just everything in this film. I mean, he gives the best performance and his lines and the delivery of them are just really, really amazing. Kind of slapstick as well, which I can appreciate. I'm a fan of things like the Three Stooges and Leslie Nielsen comedy films. But this movie is full of fantastic practical effects. Really, really well done. Very entertaining from start to finish. Great performances from everyone involved. It's basically about uh, John Lovitz's character. He has imprisoned the um, leader of the planet Spingo, and he has put himself in control. And his mission is to blow up Earth, so the planet Spingo will be the most important planet in the galaxy. And next is a film that kind of falls into the romantic comedy genre, and that is Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. This stars Michael Sarah and Kat Dennings. This movie is basically about a band that is putting on a secret show, and people must kind of find out where and when this is happening. And Kat Dennings and Michael Sarah's characters kind of become intertwined uh, that night, and they kind of form a relationship. It's a very, very sweet film. It's probably my second favorite Michael Sarah movie behind Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Really great movie. Next is a parody of Star Wars, and I'm sure you can guess what that is right now, and that is the amazing and classic Spaceballs. And this stars John Candy, Rick Moranis, and Mel Brooks, directed by Mel Brooks. One of my favorite things about this film, and there are many, is Mel Brooks. He plays two characters, and one of which is Yogurt, obviously a parody of Yoda, and the part in the film where he's talking about merchandising or moichandising, as he puts it, is very, very funny. A fun fact behind that is actually George Lucas forbid Mel Brooks from making products based on this film, uh, like action figures and all that kind of thing. So it's kind of funny, that scene. And he also mentions Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money, and that still hasn't happened, and I would really, really love to see that happen. It's great that Rick Moranis is, I believe, coming out of retirement. I heard recently about another Honey, I Shrunk the Kids film, which may be premiering on Disney+. Plus. So that's cool that uh, Rick Moranis will be back for that. Next, and I am cheating in my own video just a tad. Uh, this is a three-pack, and I love all three. And one of them is horror-related, and it is my favorite out of this pack. This is a Ernest three-pack. And I really do love Goes to Camp and Goes to Jail. But my favorite Ernest film is obviously Ernest Scared Stupid because... I love the horror genre, and I love Halloween. This is set on Halloween, and this involves a troll named Trantor who basically steals the souls of children. 
As far as the children's performances in this movie, they're not amazing, but Jim Varney is at his best as Ernest in this movie, and probably the best thing about this movie is Eartha Kitt. Uh, she is in this movie as well. She plays Old Lady Hackmore, a great performance, and the troll effects are absolutely amazing. Next is a fantasy film based on a book by Roald Dahl, and that is Matilda. This movie was released in 1996, and it stars Mara Wilson and Danny DeVito and Pam Ferris. Danny DeVito also directed this film. And a bit of behind-the-scenes info, unfortunately, Mara Wilson's mother passed away during the filming of this movie, and she chose to keep working, and Danny DeVito uh, really took her under his wing, according to her in some interviews that I've seen, and really cared for her and took that extra time. And I just have a lot more respect for Danny DeVito now uh, based on that. And this movie is really great. The performances by Danny DeVito, Mara Wilson, and Rhea Perlman, who is actually Danny DeVito's wife in real life. But the highlight of this film is definitely the Trunchbull, Agatha Trunchbull, the principal of Crunchum Hall. Amazing performance by Pam Ferris. If you have not seen Matilda, I highly recommend it. Of course, I recommend all of these. Next is another fantasy film, and that is The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. And I'm just using this as an example because I really do love all of the Lord of the Rings films as well as the Hobbit trilogy. This doesn't really meet, need any explanation. I mean, J.R.R. Tol Tolkien. This has Gandalf, Sam, Frodo. I love the relationship between those two. It's an amazingly epic film. I think the CGI still stands up pretty well today, especially on um, Gollum. Next is a very, very underrated Steven Spielberg film. When people think of Steven Spielberg, they immediately think of E.T. or Indiana Jones or one of the um, many others. But this has always been one of my favorites since childhood, and that is Hook, starring the late, great Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman. Also in this film is Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. And I love the performance by Dustin Hoffman in this. He is fantastic as Captain Hook, pretty unrecognizable as well. And the sets are really, really expansive and amazing. Uh, the effects are really, really great. And the score is nice as well. This is just a very entertaining movie. And of course, this features the Lost Boys. And the head of the Lost Boys is Rufio, played by Dante Bosco. All the Lost Boys give great and touching performances. And the final battle at the end is really, really epic. Next is a, another Tim Burton film, because I love Tim Burton films. And this is Batman Returns. I really, really do love the first Batman. But Batman Returns gets even darker than the original Batman. And this has, of course, Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer, along with uh, Michael Keaton returning as Batman. And I've mentioned this on the channel a few times. Michael Keaton is my favorite Batman. And there's just a lot going on this mo in this movie, and there is a lot going for it. The effects are really, really well done. And I just love everything about this movie. It's steeped in amazing gothic imagery and I don't even really have to mention the score by Danny Elfman it's also amazing next is a film starring Winona Ryder and that is Heathers also in this is Christian Slater and they are two people who have a pretty volatile relationship let's just say that and things get a little out of hand Christian Slater's character is a little psychotic and a little controlling of Winona Ryder's character. This movie is endlessly quotable. Love, love, love it. And this film also has a small role for Glenn Shaddix, who was also in Beetlejuice as Otho. Very funny performance by Glenn Shaddix in this. Next is another fantasy film, and that is Legend. This stars Tom Cruise and 
Tim Curry as Darkness. This movie is just very, very epic. It has everything that I love. It has unicorns and goblins and a devil beast type character in Darkness that Tim Curry plays. And also there is a character that shows up briefly in this film, Meg Mucklebones, which is an amazing effect. Really, really love this film. Uh, the effects, the practical effects are amazing. If you watch the director's cut of this film, you will see, you will hear a score by Jerry Goldsmith. And if you watch the uh, theatrical version, there is a soundtrack by Tangerine Dream. As far as which version of the film I prefer, I do prefer the director's cut. It just adds more to the story. Uh, the theatrical cut feels a little truncated and a little cut. Next is not really a film, but a performance, a live performance, and this is Cirque du Soleil. I really do love Cirque du Soleil. I saw one of their performances years ago of Draulian. This particular one is Kidam. This is a very weird and very visually arresting and interesting production, which I absolutely love, and the music and the songs are amazing. And just by the cover, you can tell what kind, what you're getting yourself into. There is a creature uh, not a creature, a character that has no head and is where is holding an umbrella. Cirque du Soleil is really, really awesome, and I highly recommend watching any of their productions. Next is a Harry Potter film. I love the Harry Potter series. I have seen all the films so many times, and I saw all of them at least once at the theater. This is The Prisoner of Azkaban. This is my favorite entry in the Harry Potter series. This is where it starts to get a little more intense and a little more adult. This was directed by Alfonso Cuaron, and he does an amazing job. This is a very, very cinematic entry. And the effects really, really still hold up, both the practical and the CGI, because, well, it's a Harry Potter film. It had a large budget. And I don't even have to mention the performances in this film. This is the introduction of the character Sirius Black, played by the amazing Gary Oldman. And the end of this film is really, really good. But of course, I love the whole thing. Next is yet another Tim Burton film, and that is Mars Attacks. This has a very exhaustive and all-star cast, including Jack Nicholson and Sarah Jessica Parker, as well as Danny DeVito again, and Glenn Close. This movie is just so much fun. This also stars Sylvia Sidney, who was in another Tim Burton film, Beetlejuice. She played Juno, the caseworker, and she is amazing in this film. She plays Grandma, and the relationship between Grandma and Richie are great in this film. Possibly the CGI effects don't hold up that well today, but I can totally excuse that because this movie is so much fun. One of my favorite scenes is when the aliens invade the White House and a chandelier drops on Glenn Close's character. She plays the First Lady, and Jack Nicholson has a dual role in this film. Lastly, in this episode, is The Dark Crystal, another fantasy film, and this is a Jim Henson production. And this movie is so fantastic. It features all puppets. Uh, the story of this movie is very touching and very tragic. Uh, I love the characters in this film. The Skeksis are very nasty and uh, kind of what they're doing to the podling people. And also the uh, voice performances by the uh, Jim Henson team are really, really amazing. Great stuff with the Dark Crystal. Love it. I also love the score. So that is it for... Uh, part two of my favorite films. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for sticking around this long with me, and I will see you next time.